This project began with the endeavor to make something simple that wouldn't take too much time. Spoiler alert, that didn't work out. The project itself didn't take an inordinate amount of time, however, unplanned problems perpetually presented themselves during the project. Such is life. Besides wanting to do something simple in a short amount of time, I also wanted to try to do something a little bit different than what I usually do, and also perhaps a little bit seasonal. Seasonal. I had this leftover orange fabric from my hobbit dress and I was wondering if I had enough to make one of those pumpkin bags, the actual pumpkin shaped bags that apparently were a collaboration between Paramount and La Femme et Noire. And then I realized, I don't think I'd feel comfortable carrying that kind of bag. It's incredibly cool looking, I love looking at it, but I don't think I'd feel comfortable carrying it. But what I am comfortable carrying are backpack purses. So the question then became, how can I incorporate this orange fabric as a pumpkin into a backpack purse? And then the idea hit me. Remember that scene in The Nightmare Before Christmas when Jack is walking through the forest and he sees all those trees with the holiday doors on them? What if I made a backpack that was reminiscent of a tree that had a jack-o'-lantern on the front pocket? I had to see if I could do it. I began by taking my backpack purse, did some measuring, and figured all of the pieces I would need. I cut them out of a bed sheet first and pinned things together to be sure the measurements were good, and with that, I had a pattern. I feel terrible. Like, physically terrible. I'm not feeling great today, but I still want to work on the project. I'm getting ready to cut out the fabric, and I'm going to be using this. This is a sham. I don't know why they're called shams, but that's beside the point. It may have been beside the point, but it kept creeping in front of the point in my mind. So I went on to explain that a sham is different from a pillowcase, and then the thought occurred to me, wait, is that why they're called shams? As in they are literally false pillowcases? Yep, that is exactly it. A pillowcase sham is a sham, but a sham is not necessarily a pillowcase sham. I think that was about all the sense I could offer that day. I went on to discuss many more things, but upon watching the footage, I realized just how strong with me the brain fog was that day, so I will spare you. I disassembled the dissembling bed furnishing, being sure to squirrel away the buttons for a future project. Then I cut up the sham. For the pumpkin, I duplicated the pocket pattern piece onto paper and sketched the face onto that to make sure of my sizing. But I completely forgot about seam allowances, so I had to draw it again. It doesn't matter if you've been sewing for 10 years, 10 months, or 10 days, mistakes like this happen. Don't beat yourself up about it. For the stem, I used a scrap of some green cotton that I had left over from a different project. It kind of looks like an orange apple right now, but um, I think with the orange color, once you put the face on it, it'll be clear. It's a pumpkin. To bring the jack-o'-lantern to life, I just traced along the lines and snipped away. Although the sham fabric was fairly thick and sturdy, I wanted a little extra stability, so I cut out some canvas for inner lining, lining out of a bed sheet, and for the bottom of the bag, an extra piece of heavy-duty interfacing. So three layers for everything, except for the bottom, which had four layers. I hand-basted the pumpkin face into place. Say that five times fast. And then began the tedious journey of sewing a shrunken zigzag stitch, and by that I mean a zigzag stitch where the width and especially length have been diminished so that it acts as a buttonhole stitch. It's a thing of beauty. But so very tedious to sew along so many edges. For the knob nose, I tried taking a few layers of the sham fabric and doing the same zigzag stitch all around the edges, but I really didn't like how it turned out. So I chopped up some tiny scraps into tinier pieces and used them as stuffing to stuff into a teeny tiny triangular pillow type situation and stitched it loosely on so that it could rotate just a bit. I really like how this turned out, and it had me wondering why only round cloth covered buttons are a thing? Why aren't there triangular cloth covered buttons? I felt a strong urge to make an outfit incorporating these triangular buttons. Maybe later. Today, what I'm doing is just putting together the pieces of the backpack. I've already got some things kind of basted together. So that's the back. I've got to sew this on. Sew that together, and I've got this front piece pinned together. I'm gonna sew those together. And then put the bottom on, put the pumpkin on, put the zippers in. I think I've mentioned before that sewing to me feels a lot like putting a puzzle together. And I think so far I'm doing pretty good. So I'm going to get back to putting all the pieces together to form my little 3D puzzle. And I am very eager to finish this so I can get to the painting portion of the project. 
that's going to be an adventure. Okay, I need some bias tape. And even though I have oodles of bias tape here that I have collected from the thrift store over the years, I have determined that I neither have the width nor the color that I need. So that means I'm going to have to make it using the fabric that I used as lining, which is a bed sheet. And I do not enjoy making bias tape, but it must be done. It's decided I am most likely never making another backpack purse. For some reason, this, this project, I'm just not really enjoying it. And it doesn't mean that it was a waste. I'm still gonna finish it if I can. And now I am better informed as to knowing, so is it going to be worth it for me to purchase this backpack or would it be better for me to make it as a crafter? as a creator, you can't make everything. And I know I've tried to do that and it's overwhelming. So I have to discover which things I can make and which things are gonna be more worth it to me to purchase, to pay someone else to make for me. This is one of those things probably. I don't really wanna do this again. If you're wanting to buy something that you think, actually I could make it for less, do it try it. It will not be time wasted. Even if you don't continue with it, it's not a failure. It's a discovery. You're learning which things you can make and which things aren't worth it to you to make. They're going to be worth it to someone else. And that's the beauty of the world. There are so many different people with so many different interests. So try it. Try it. And if you don't like it, then you've discovered that you don't like it and you can appreciate people who do. I don't know, I think it's pretty amazing. I finally got the pocket attached, zipper and all. After that, it was time to take a little break for a few days. It was then time to attach the longer zipper to the backpack. It was a good thing to do the pocket zipper first because this zipper felt easy in comparison. What did not feel easy was lining the backpack. And here's a quick shot of the backpack all finished. I wanted to take a moment to appreciate how cute it was because I was about to paint it. And just in case I were to destroy it, I wanted to be able to commemorate the cuteness. As my time was limited, I determined to make the best use of it by coloring my hair and painting the backpack simultaneously. I am very nervous, but I'm gonna do it. I have some brown acrylic paint and some white in case it's too dark, but I think this is gonna be a really good color, hopefully. The only thing that I was not able to get was fabric medium because at my local store they didn't have any. They also didn't have fabric paint. So that's okay though because I have acrylic and according to the internet you can make your own fabric medium. And I read it on the internet so it must be true. You simply mix water, vinegar, and glycerin. And I happen to have all of those things on hand. So I'm going to make my own fabric medium. And I have this as another drop cloth because I don't want to destroy this beautiful bathroom floor that I am borrowing. Okay, I forgot something. The backpack. I'll be right back. Okay, if I were really wise, I would go grab a scrap of fabric and practice on that first, but I had never claimed wisdom, so I'm just going to start probably on the bottom or the back. I mixed up the potion as the internet instructed and realized I forgot to bring a stir stick, so I just used the handle of the measuring cup. I will tell you right now, if you want to learn how to paint, this channel will not assist you in that. I really have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to painting. Any kind of paint, any kind of surface, I just kind of slap that stuff on there. I would love to get better someday, but it'll have to be a different day. I mixed things together willy-nilly and experimented with different paint brushes and brushing in different directions. By the end of it, this is what it looked like. 
kind of looked like I dipped it in mud. And when I tell you I was feeling discouraged, yeah. I left it to sit and dry for much longer than I would have liked, but when I was finally able to return to it, I had the idea of stuffing it to make the painting process a little bit easier. And then I just started putting more paint on, this time with a lighter grayish brown color on top, with more fabric medium, and I think it did help a little bit. It still doesn't look like a tree, but I am going off a cartoon tree, not an actual tree, so there is that. After that dried for a while, I needed to heat set it. Usually you're supposed to use an iron, but that applies to flat fabric, so I decided to just go ahead and try using my blow dryer. Or hair dryer. This thing. What do you call this thing? I know some people say blow dryer because it blows air. Some hair dryer. I guess you could also say air dryer because it does blow air. And usually they're used to dry hair, but they could be used for other things, so hair dryer doesn't seem to do it justice. Let me know in the comments. What do you call this thing? Now that I have a brand new backpack purse, I feel that it deserves a wallet of its own. Not a matching wallet, but maybe a complimentary wallet. I was thinking I could draw inspiration from one of the characters from Nightmare Before Christmas, and I was thinking maybe Oogie Boogie. I have this burlap ribbon, and I can cut out some eyes and a mouth and put them on the front. I didn't want to make a wallet completely from scratch, so I decided to check the thrift store and see if I could find anything, and I found this little guy for 50 cents. Got a nice billfold area, cards, vertical and horizontal, fancy, and then a snap closure. I don't know why there are two of them here. Maybe because if you've got an overflowing wallet, you use this one. It's not closing. They don't snap. They don't snap. Neither of them snap. It's broken. Oh well. I'm not gonna complain about that. I could probably figure out a way to make it close. It's fine, it's fine. So I'm gonna get to work on making an Oogie Boogie inspired wallet. That sound that escaped me was because a little bit of glue got onto the wallet before I was ready, which isn't really a big deal. I could have just let it dry and then picked it off. But I'm not used to working with hot glue, and so I get very frantic when I do work with it. I feel like I'm in a race against time and I'm going to destroy the project if I'm not careful, which I guess I could, but I think hot glue is a little more forgiving than that. I just seem to become frantic whenever I use it. I'm not sure why. Okay, so I've got my bag of scraps, and it looks like there's black in here. I cannot open this with one hand here. Okay. And it's the linen scraps. <gasps> yes. As always, not perfect, and I think it could have looked far better if I had taken time to learn how to paint, but I can't learn everything all at once. I've got to take small steps. I learned that I really don't want to make backpack purses on the regular, and my appreciation for those who do has grown. But my desire to learn how to paint has been renewed. All in all, I think it was a success to try some things, get some questions answered, and gain appreciation for the diverse crafters in the world.